when it comes to these chips and software for fully autonomous vehicles, Qualcomm's a little bit later than some of your rivals in announcing this kind of product. Some critics could say that you're coming into self-driving too late. How would you respond to that criticism? Very good. Well, f first of all, happy to be here. Good afternoon. Happy New Year to both of you. Uh, we're very excited, I think, to expand, you know, our, our automotive offering, getting into autonomous. And the reason I'll answer your question is, we we believe that the cars are going to have to process so much data, and you know, it require so much processing capabilities. Pretty much, uh, it is going to require a completely different equation about power. And coming from the cell phone industry, we actually have the ability to do chips. They're very efficient from a power standpoint. You cannot run a data center out of the trunk of your car. And I think that's where the real opportunity is for Qualcomm. We unveiled today uh, our solutions from both uh, all the way to level one to level four plus, which is autonomy. But more important, we believe the real commercial opportunity will be to add autonomy to every car as a convenient feature with the driver behind the wheel, much much like you have cruise control. And I think that's the real opportunity that Qualcomm has to scale this. And we're also pleased to announce the expansion of our relationship with General Motors now to include autonomy as well. So very happy about that. It's a significant milestone for the Qualcomm automotive business here at CES. So when we talk about, uh, Cristiano, uh, sort of the prospects here and the competition in this space, I mean, a couple of months ago, I think back in November, Intel talked about its acquisition of Mobileye and how it was allowing it to sort of scale up uh, at a pace that it said uh, was faster than some of its competitors. Is the race here, is this going to be about what you do in Qualcomm internally, or do you start looking at M&A and potentially buying some of the smaller players out there? Look, that's a great question. We, we've been building in our automotive business uh, organically. And I think uh, we got to naturally to connectivity to become the number one in both uh, telematics and, and connecting the car to the other cars with seller V2X. Then we went to the digital cockpit transformation and we became now number one with 19 cust uh, OEMs engaged. And I think we look at autonomy as just a natural extension of our computing you know, capabilities becoming more powerful for battery powered devices. That's what you see in phones and we got into PCs. Naturally, that will be for the car as well. And you know, it, we could see further acquisitions down the road, but probably smaller. Mm. We feel pretty good about what we've done so far uh, to be able to build an ADAS platform with uh, organic uh, efforts. Okay, obviously there's going to be a lot of flashy things shown at CES that would make you think that all of this is available tomorrow. When it comes to fully autonomous vehicles, though, we're not there yet. When is Qualcomm betting that we will actually get fully autonomous vehicles? Is this a 2021, 2022, 2030 event? Yeah, I, you know, I think that's what the difference is. Why we have a platform that we can do full autonomy, we're really focused on what we call level two plus and level three, which allow you to actually get scale and make this really a commercial good proposition for us and for our makers. And the platform we unveil today, we expect to see cars in the road by 2023 uh, with uh, what we call level two plus or level three, which allow you to have the full capabilities of an autonomous driving, but with the driver behind the wheel, more like a convenient feature. That's what we think the scale is going to be, and we're going to see that becoming a commercial reality. All right. Uh, well, with, with regard to that commercial reality, Cristiano, we're talking about uh, the competition between companies here, but we know uh, that China has really gone full force with their AI and autonomous technology here, and it's sort of a standardized program. They have the government sort of orchestrating or at least sort of overseeing a lot of this. We don't necessarily have that here in the U.S. Do you think that could be an impediment? Look, we have been, you know, competing in the global marketplace uh, for a while now across a number of different segments. We expect that to be true on AI and be true uh, in automotive. But on AI alone, because we have a leadership in low power processing uh, versus, you know, the power hungry data centers, 
even cooperation with some of the China cloud companies, something we're seeing right now, interest from Qualcomm products. And uh, I think, you know, at the end of the day, we have to keep the technology treadmill moving. We have to move faster. That's been the history of success of the United States tech companies. And I think it's going to be no different going forward.